Well, welcome to a late night edition of Elm Live. Today is November 19th, 2016, and it is 10.51 p.m. We are about to do our Codevember project for the day. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to start with a folder for day 19. Let's move into that folder and start up our text editor. Today we're going to be doing a little poetry visualization. We'll be using Elm 0.18, released earlier this week. So let's make our main.elm. We'll be using HTML, and we'll need that type exposed. Let's start with our main program. We'll be using time and subscriptions, so we'll need a full-fledged program. And let's add our type annotation here as well. We'll be having a model and a message type, so let's define those, shall we? And then we can fill out the fields needed by our program. We'll need to define our update function and our view function. As always, our update function takes a message and a model and returns the new model and a command. We'll just put a placeholder for now. We'll also need our view function. As always, our view function takes a model and gives us HTML. Now let's figure out what's missing here. I'm going to run elm make from the command line to give me hopefully the exact line number where things are going wrong here. And it looks like my Atom plugin is going crazy. Ah, and I have an extra space before command.none. Great. And we also need to add our subscriptions. We'll have none for the moment. Let's see if we can start up the app now. I'm going to open my web browser now to localhost port 8000. And there's our app. We'll be using an Emily Dickinson poem tonight. Here's the first line of it. So let's go ahead and style this properly. And we will be importing html.attributes. We'll be putting our text into a div. and adding some CSS styling. Let's add a black background and also make our color a fairly light color. 
And let's make it slightly yellow as well. There's our app. I want to have the black background fill the entire screen, so let's try doing that now. We'll be using CSS styles. Let's see how that works. Great. I'm going to add another div inside to center our text on the screen. And this div, oh, let's also add a font size here. And we can go even larger with this, I think. Great. Now let's size and position the center div. I'm going to try positioning this uh, using percentages. And I'm also going to center it horizontally as well. <clears throat> and seeing as it's late and I'm having trouble remembering how to do fancy things in CSS, I'm going to look up how to center a div. This looks like what we need. So we'll convert this into tuples. Top 50%. And transform translate y negative 50%. Let's see if that worked. Great. And for the horizontal positioning, let's try margin auto first. No good. Let's see if we can try the same trick for horizontal positioning. And it looks like, no, we can't. Let's try text align center. And there we go. <clears throat> so here's my plan for our animation here. I want to have this line be typed out one character at a time. And when we get to the end, we'll advance the line. And we will show the second line by erasing and typing the new characters in the new line. 
So let's define our model. We'll have our current line, which is a string. We will have our next lines, which will be a list of strings. And let's also define our initial model here. We'll give that a type so the Yum compiler will help us out. And we need to add fields to our initial model. So current, when we start, will be an empty string. And our next lines will be a list of all the lines from our poem. I'll copy the whole thing in now. Let's convert all these lines to strings. And we'll add some commas in here to separate them in the list. And there's our model. So let's insert this into our program. Great. So now we'll be showing the current line in our view. which at the moment is empty. So let's add our update function. And we'll also add a time dot every subscription. So let's define a real message type now. We're going to have a tick, which takes the current time. And we'll destructure our message in our update function. Then let's add our subscription now. We are going to subscribe to time.every and every 100 milliseconds we will send the tick message. Then we need to update our function. So I want to have a function that takes the current string and the target string and starts uh, transforming it one step at a time. So let's call that next step. It's going to take two strings and return a string back. I'll call these the current and the target. And let's see. What we'd like to do is find the first character of the string, of the target string, that doesn't yet appear in current. So maybe we can define this recursively. Let's try this out. So I think our ending case will be if current is the empty string, then we're going to return string.left of the target string. Otherwise, we need to check and see if string.left, and we need to tell it how much, if the first character of the current equals the first character of the target, then we're going to return that character plus uh, we're going to recurse into the rest of the string. And we will pass in string dot drop left of current 
let's add a line break in here and string dot drop left one of the target. And finally, if the first characters don't match, then we're going to remove the character from current. Is that right? Let's see. Uh, we only want to do that if we're at the very last character. Hmm. So let's see. Let's do this. Let's do a case on string dot left one of current. And if it's the empty string, then we'll do this. Hmm. I guess we only want to check a single character. Never mind that. I like the if statements better here. So we're going to say else if string dot length of current equals one then we will return the empty string and I think we want to just always recurse here in the other case All right, it's kind of late, so I'm not sure I did that correctly, but we will find out shortly. So whenever we receive a new tick message, we are going to update our model to use the current string and replace that by calling next step with current and the target, which means we need to destructure the list of upcoming lines. Model dot next lines. And if we have the empty, uh, if we have no future lines, then we'll just stop. We'll just continue returning our existing model. And if we do have a next line, we will destructure that using the cons operator. Then here we have our next line to pass in to our next step function. And this is model.current. All right, uh, let's see where we're at. So we have the letter A, the first time current is empty, so we're returning the first letter of the target string, which is an A, then the second time current will not be empty, ah, and we're checking if the string.length equals 1. In this case, we also want to make sure that the character does not equal the target character. So if it is, then we want to recurse into the next character. So we'll check string dot left of one of the current. And I'm going to add this in parentheses. If string dot left, if the first character of current does not equal the first character of the target, and the current is only one character, then we will remove the character. Otherwise, we'll recurse down. 
Let's try this out. Great. So the other thing we want to do is when we reach the end of the line, we want to advance to the next line. So we'll do that here. Next lines is going to equal, and we'll say if model.current equals the next line, then our next lines will just be the remaining lines, and we'll remove next out of there. Otherwise, we'll keep our existing next lines, which is the same as next followed by rest. Let's see how this goes. Perfect. Hmm. So interestingly, this stopped after the third line. Uh, oh no, it completely messed up somewhere in the middle. So let's actually see if we can use the new Elm debugger and figure out what's going on here. Well, we know what's going on. I wrote the code incorrectly. So let's see if we can figure out how to fix it. Let's see. Is there a way to pause this? Hmm. Well, without a way to pause the events, this debugger is not going to be particularly useful. All right. Well, tonight I don't have the patience to deal with that. So let's look back at the code. So where things went wrong, let's identify the moment where things went wrong. So at last, the lamp's upon my side, and then it backs up all the way to the comma, the rest of life to see. So what happened here? seems like we recursed. Ah, well, here's a better way to fix this. I think if the characters, uh, if we find mismatching characters early on, we can just immediately remove a character from the entire current and return, and we don't need to recurse down. So let's do this first, if current is empty, then we will return the first character of the target string. Otherwise, if the first two characters are not equal, then we will return uh, string dot drop right of one of current and we'll just immediately shortcut and remove one character from the end of current. Uh, otherwise if our current string only has one character then we're going to remove it. That seems unnecessary given this code here. And then finally, we will recurse down if the first characters match. And I forgot my then here. 
Let's try this out. Great. So that's exactly what I was aiming for tonight. Let's do one small cleanup. We can stop our events from running when our model has uh, reached the end and run out of next lines. So let's add that logic here. We'll say if model dot next lines is the empty list then we'll return no subscriptions otherwise we'll return our animation timer and let's shrink the timer up for a moment so we can run through this more quickly And you can see here in the debugger, the count of events has stopped. So that worked wonderfully. So that's all I wanted to do for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. And tomorrow, Sunday, we will have our regularly scheduled Elm Lives Daytime Edition. I hope to see you all then, and have a great night.